All right, hello, I'm Alex, and I'm here with a sorcery contested realm deck that I've been playing with. Uh, this deck is intended to explore the most aggressive deck that I can come up with in the current alpha card set. And uh, I mostly started thinking about this because uh, Fargi, a guy that I've met on the Discord, was like, hey, you know, how do I beat a Pathfinder? Right? They get so many cards, and there's you know such a good mid-range deck. And I was like, well, you know, if you want to beat a mid-range deck, just kill them before they make all those cards relevant. And that's that's true of a lot of different strategies. If you can just finish them off before they get to whatever they're trying to do, no problem. So uh, this deck is driven by a Magic the Gathering philosophy called the Philosophy of Fire. It's you know very common in red decks. And the question is, you know, how can you most efficiently reduce your opponent's life total to zero? You know, which cards do the most damage at the least expensive rate? And you know, you can trade your your lands and your life. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as your opponent gets to zero more before you do. So, um, all right. So the the avatar for this deck is the Battle Mage. And the reason I've chosen the Battle Mage is that um, this deck has a very low mana curve. Nothing costs more than four. So I want to tap this avatar four times to play four sites, or if I get lucky, you know, three times to play three sites, and then also play a core or a Philosopher's Stone. Uh, and then I want to... Um, you know, tap it to hit my opponent's sights, or maybe in some cases tap it to, you know, hit a creature and draw a card. So, um, you know, this deck, it is possible to cast, say, two spells that deal damage, maybe like two or three points of damage, uh, and also make an attack on the opposing sights. And it is, you know, possible to do nine damage to your opponent's life total in a turn that way. Um, you know, not, not that's not always what happens. A lot more often, you're dealing six damage in a turn. But these are like very like chunky, kill you fast turns. And the battle mage turning sideways and attacking because it has three power is often as good as casting a spell, um, but without having to pay any mana. Uh, so, um, yeah. That, that's the reason for the Battle Mage. Um, you know, just side note, I'm pretty impressed with the Avatar of Earth, like some of the decks that make it have even higher power than this. Um, and then, you know, kind of drag opponent's sights into the middle of a, a nest of Earth sites controlled by that player. Um, but I think that's a, it's a slower strategy, um, even though it can, you know, has a higher ceiling. And my goal here is, you know, speed, speed, speed. All right, so then moving on to the minions. Um, anyone who watched my pack openings might chuckle. You know, I, I commented that I thought paying an extra mana to get charge uh, made the charge cards look not that great to me. Um, and when I say extra mana, I mean paying more mana than the creature has power. Uh, but there's so much removal in this game. There's so many, like, you know, I, I've also commented that, like, creatures tend to just be dead. So, um, you know, here I am. Uh, when watching people play decks that were trying to deal damage quickly, Thunderstorm was usually the highest performing card, right? Like, if a Thunderstorm hits twice, uh, massively bad for your opponent. And often, like, you know, the thunderstorm would hit once and people would do stuff to move out from under the th thunderstorm, which, you know, took resources and disrupted their plans. And I was like, okay, you know, I can only play three uh, three thunderstorms. What's the thing that's the most like a thunderstorm after that? Well, it's probably a minion with charge, right? The minion gets to enter play, deal damage to the opponent, and then um, now the opponent has a problem that they have to spend some resources on. They can probably handle it, but also sometimes they can't, and the minion will get to keep dealing damage. Um, you know, I, I find a very common thing that happens is 
summon one of these guys, they attack, opponent loses three life, and then opponent aims like a lightning bolt or something at it, and it dies. Now, the opponent's down three life and a card, um, and you know, now I as the player opposing them, you know, I didn't take that life damage, so I have, you know, more life as a resource, um, which if I'm playing against another kind of burn focused deck, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to husband so that, you know, like they don't burn me out somehow. Um, but if it's a deck that's not putting any pressure on me, this means that I can use my life to make attacks with my battle mage against opposing creatures um, so that I have, you know, uh, other resources to spend at other places. Um, okay, and then, uh, th so three copies of Gyre Hippogriffs. This is a little bit harder to cast, but the mana, the, the site base is designed to cast it. And this is just like more copies of Protrusion Cavalry. If I have a choice between the two, I'll always cast the Cavalry first. Uh, because the Hippogriffs are slightly better later um, when an opponent is at death's door at being able to chase them down because of airborne. You know, doesn't always come up, but, you know, s s slight piece of truth. Um, and I guess I shouldn't say always. I probably would cast the Hippogriffs first if my opponent had some creatures and I was worried about, you know, some kind of counterattack. Um, so moving on to the spells, um, like I said, everything costs less than four, and my plan is to put four sites into play, um, or get four mana sources. So things costing two is amazing, because then I can cast two of them on the same turn, and double spelling in this game, especially if you, you know, ha have an enough spells in your hand, is a way to really pull ahead. Um, so, Firebolts, two mana for three damage. Lightning Bolt, two mana for three damage. Chain Lightning, two mana for only two damage. But a lot of the things in this deck deal three. So if you hit an opponent with six things that deal three, that's 18. And so like, you know, a, a two damage finisher is, you know, acceptable. Um, like it'll, it'll, it'll get you just to the end. Um, and then, like, you know, Chain Lightning has the nice feature where if, if you have four mana, you can deal two damage to two different things. Um, only two copies of Chain Lightning right now. I think it's the weakest card in the deck, but, you know, as I play more, I might discover that there's some other card that I think is weaker than Chain Lightning and get the third copy in there. Uh, and then um, at two mana, also four copies of Blink. Your avatar actions are incredibly precious, right? You can draw a site, play a site. Those are like unique things that only avatar can do. And then, um, you know, with the battle mage being able to attack for three damage, you have to be close to your opponent's sites. So um, Blink is a, I mean, I think a good card in almost every deck it can be played in, but for the battle mage can represent a way to get the battle mage in position to do the fighting that they need to. Um, also, fire spells are kind of picky about relative location between the caster and the target, and um, blink can also be very helpful to you know, get that positioning later. Uh, I love this card, um, and you know, almost always throw four in my decks. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, three mana, minor explosion. Uh, this card is, I think, fantastic. It's, um, you know, the fact that it hits everything in a, a site means that creatures can't, you know, protect an avatar from damage, or if there are multiple creatures in a space, you can trade one card for two or more. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in death store situations, this is. The, the most frequent spell that I finished the game with. Uh, really love it. Uh, four copies of Grapple Shot. Um, until people play around this card consistently and well, um, th this card is just like a dominant part of the format and is perfect for Battle Mage. Yeah, you, know, you get sequences where um, you can set up, 
you know, on turn two, either playing a tower or maybe on turn one, you play a core and you play two other sites and you have three mana on turn two and you can, you know, grapple shot that kind of central column and move your battle mage on top of their avatar and strike for three. And now you are in position for the rest of the game to use your battle mage either to attack their sites or their creatures and it's just amazing um you know i think that maybe eventually people will all play like blink and riptide and you know move their caster off that center column and and make it a little harder for the battle mage you know to have like a target with the grapple shot um but i just i don't see enough people playing that way and um, yeah, even, even when someone plays around it, often at some point in the game, you, you line up the grapple shot in some creature. So it provides movement, provides damage, very efficient, love it. Um, fireball, four mana, so really expensive. Uh, but, you know, deals four damage, so it's also, like, you know, very efficient and, um, but you'll know, like, if you're doing a bunch of threes and get someone to, like, 15 damage, like, five threes, and then a fireball, it's still not quite going to fish someone off. So, um, you know, it's, it's not, like, actually any better at killing the opponent, usually. Um, but it, it can kill some of the, like, bigger creatures that... Um, would be really inconvenient otherwise. Like a fireball plus a desert can kill a Cerebus. Or if people are playing bodyguards or vampires, like this can finish them off. So I tend to hold this as a like, yeah, this is, this is my reserve. It, it shares the quality with minor explosion also of getting past, you know, defenders. So um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a solid card. Um, it's possible that my curve is like a little too high and maybe I should be cutting a fireball for another chain lightning. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, okay. Moving on, uh, Infiltrate. I think everyone knows that this card is amazing. Um, I think that it's close to its very best in this fire and lightning deck. Um, the reason I say that is because if, you're pl if your opponent is playing any minions at all, um, you know, the Fire and Lightning deck is mostly using its spells to remove the minion and then using the Battle Mage to attack the site. Um, with Infiltrate, you get to remove the minion and then, you know, the next turn you can, you know, you get to attack the site that turn and then the next turn you know, that, that minion is still gone, so as long as you can handle whatever new thing they've done, you can attack again. Um, and then, like, you could, like, hit them with this infiltrate thing. Or, like, the infiltrate creature can, like, be the thing that removes the other creature, and then, you know, the next turn you can aim your spell at your opponent because the infiltrated creature, you know, attacked. Or, anyway, it's, it's just... It's often a, kind of a two for one, and maybe the ability to like get an attack against your opponent's sight wouldn't have been that exciting in most decks, but because life total, life total is the paramount resource when playing this strategy, infiltrate is always like pushing some extra damage. Um, so, uh, and also if someone's playing a creature that's just like way too big, maybe they played some mixes and you know, ramped out some Hydra that's immune to damage and has six power. Like, th this is, you know, your answer to it. I want to be clear that in a 30 card deck, your chance of finding a card that you have two copies of is low. Um, so, like, you don't always, like, get it to solve your problem, but uh, when you do, it sure is nice. Okay. Um, and then I would say, you know, if there was a metagame that just had a lot of decks that didn't have creatures, maybe this card would be wrong then. Um, but I, it just seems like every deck has creatures, minions. So, uh, all right, moving on. Uh, Thunderstorm. Uh, this card, 
obviously it's it's being powered down from alpha to beta so that it it's it exists for three turns instead of getting in three hits so um you know it's it's, it's not the kind of inevitable source of nine damage that it currently is um but even when you summon it it deals three and your opponent has to spend resources moving like maybe they have their own blink or maybe they tap their avatar and like walk over so they're sacrificing you know either a site placement or drawing a site um you know like that kind of time loss while not as good as damaging someone is like still effective so i think this card is just like very good and there are also situations where like you know you can summon it over an avatar and they don't have places to escape to and so it, it does more than three damage so yeah i think this card is just a plus um okay uh and then amethyst and ruby core uh like i said this deck wants four mana sources in play it also wants to have two fire threshold and two air threshold uh if you get a core it just gets to enact its plan a little bit faster uh, which is great, right? Like in in theory, like on the draw, if your opponent plays a second site toward you, uh, you could play a second site that's like a tower after playing a core and have four mana, and summon like a Petrosian Cavalry or Gyre Hippogriffs and attack in, or summon a Thunderstorm, and uh, those openings are nice. Um, and then uh, Philosopher's Stone. You know, this is a deck that plays lots of two mana, or like low cost cards into two elements. And so this is frequently worth two mana a turn and makes it so that those like double spelling turns are really easily available. Um, so this is just, you know, fantastic when you get it. Uh, all right, moving on to the sites. Uh, three ruins, you know, makes air, makes fire, kind of a no-brainer. Uh, two copies of each tower. Um, the towers are all great in that, you know, they give you a mana bump. You can sequence your plays so that, you know, the towers enable you to play a four mana minion or a thunderstorm a turn early. Um, there's also times where, uh, you know, you could play it as your fourth site and get up to five mana and double spell with a two mana spell and a three mana spell. Um, you know, just very nice cards. Um, obviously, su playing subsequent copies is less good, uh, which is, you know, why I've mixed them up. Uh, all right, and then uh, River of Flame, fire decks care about spellcaster locations, so having an extra spellcaster is sometimes helpful. And I think that of all the sites for fire, this is generally speaking the best. You know, there, there are, are other ones that are situationally better, but this is just like solid value all the time. <coughs> um, all right, then there's uh, six deserts. These are fine. You know, um, the number of times where the extra damage matters doesn't feel like that many, though, you know, combining one damage with, you know, three or four damage from a spell, you know, can be a way to take down something big. Um, and, you know, sometimes there are one mana minions that you can kind of clear out for free-ish. So, you know, like, not knocking it, just if there were better fire sites there's a good chance that, like, you know, I'd be playing those, but these are what there are. Um, so then Observatory, uh, two copies. So I'll play Observatory either on the first turn, hoping that uh, there might be a core or a stone on top of my deck, and playing it early will get me, you know, a more explosive start. Or I'll play an Observatory as my last site, where, you know, um, I, I kind of have the maximum depth of cards that I'm seeing. So 
between like you know cards that I've drawn in my opening sequence and those cards I can you know try and put them in the most useful order and you know in general the things that I move to the top most often are like cavalry hippogriffs thunderstorm you know things that might do repeated damage over time if left unchecked or things like grapple shot or blink where I haven't gotten my character to where I want my avatar to where I want him to be so you know I need magic that helps him move and then uh, last but not least is crossroads uh, it doesn't make any threshold so it's kind of weird to have it in a deck that cares about threshold but the reason it's here is because this deck wants you know exactly two red threshold and two uh, gray threshold and the crossroads can help find a ruins if you don't have one which really helps make that and if you already have your threshold met by your other cards in hand um, it can set you up to get a tower that doesn't match an existing tower in your hand or like just set you up to find a tower in the first place um, but it's better than playing I think another copy of any tower because it can also set you up to get you know red sources if you need them so could be wrong but I, I think it's pretty good here uh, the one set that I'm not playing that seems the most interesting to me is Imperial, Imperial Road and Imperial Road does two things one it turns one site playing action into two and that means that your avatar is freed up to start making attacks earlier uh, and that's really interesting to me the other thing is if you play the Imperial Road you know adjacent to your starting site like let's say it's your second site if your opponent uses it they're putting a site within range of your avatar um, you know like they, they can't be like turtling placing sites in back that you you know are kind of like really far away and um, I think it, it, it kind of like exposes them in a way, which I think is also interesting. So that, that, that might be a way to upgrade this, this deck. It might be that, um, you know, my man is good enough and I need to accept that, um, you know, maybe I'll have to draw a fifth site sometimes, but in exchange having Imperial Roads save me, you know, a turn playing a site in other games is super worth it. Um, so anyway, food for thought. It could be also wrong, like Imperial Road might be ramping other decks up into their big mana and um, it's not that much better. Yeah, anyway, uh, okay, so I think that's the video. Um, yeah, do damage to your opponent, make them dead before they do whatever thing they're going to do. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe. If you have any questions about how this de deck works, uh, you know, hit me up in the comments and um, you know, like the video. And I'll probably you know keep making sorcery videos. If you have any requests for like, here's a cool idea. You know, how would you build this? You know, throw it in there. No promises, but uh, I love deck building and give me an interesting idea, and I, I'll often run with it. Okay. Take it easy, until next time.